We're going out to Denver. Actually, this is a cool story. We're going to go out to Denver. Ralph Massetti, look, another Italian. I bet you he does the hand thing. President and CEO of Bike Cafe is with us right now. This is an eco-friendly franchise. Okay, so your Starbucks on a bike. I have to buy the bike or the, I have to buy or do I lease the apparatus from you guys? It's a franchise, so you know we, we sell you the bike, and, the, and with the franchise fee comes all your training. We give you all your stock, all your uniforms. So it's about a $21,000 investment, and that's all in. With, with that investment, you come to Denver, you learn how to be a certified barista, you take the delivery of your bicycle, you take it back to your, to your market, you put it in the, your location, and you're ready to go. So you know what we've really developed is a new way of presenting and delivering an old product. I mean, coffee is as old as as most people can remember in, in, you know, in terms of a, a modern product being sold. But what we've done is we've, we've created a new way to deliver it in a cheaper, more cost-effective, uh, quicker way to get to market than a typical brick-and-mortar uh, coffee shop would require. Okay, Ralph, so here's what I'm thinking. You, I know you're not yeah. in New York City yet, but walk, walk with me, if you will, down the streets of New York where people are waiting on lines at these Starbuckses, which, by the way, I'm not a Starbucks fan, so I've never been online, so I, I don't know much about it, but... Um, you pull up on your bike and you park right outside Starbucks. I mean, can you do that? And then you just sort of ring a little bell and people on the back of the line could come right out. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you know, it, it, that's a really good question. The, the, uh, and a good statement, the, the bike actually started in London. There was a gentleman named Will Shakechef who was a client of mine. I own a franchise development company called The Franchise Builder. So I've been developing franchises for over 10 years. And Will was a client of mine out of my London office. And one thing led to another, and I liked the concept so much, and I was so, so driven by what he had started, that I bought the concept from him, moved him and the bicycle to America, and we, we moved the, uh, essentially moved the franchise here. But he used to roll up right in front of coffee shops uh, in, in, uh, in England towns, and he would do great. I mean, there would be a, what they call a queue in England, and he would roll up right on the street and take those customers. That's really not what we're trying to do. I mean, the mobility of the bike is a great benefit, and there are certain, um, there are certain owners that want to ride the bike and they want to be outside, and that's, that's really why they're, why they're drawn to the bike cafe. But I know that if I were the owner of a bike cafe, I would want a permanent location where I have everyday customers that really get to know me and get to know me as a barista and start to develop a relationship with me. And, and in turn, I really understand what kind of coffee they like. I, I introduce them to new types of coffee. We're really trying to create an art form here. You yeah, know, what you, you know have what? at Starbucks. This, let me yep. tell you what this reminds me of. There's a show on the Food Network cha uh, channel where it's like these uh, food carts and they go all over the country. And this is basically what they do. They like steal. They don't steal. They park in front of really busy restaurants and the whole point of the show is to right. see you can get the most customers. I think it's, I mean, people on the chat think it's genius. I think that, oh, great food truck race. Thank you very much. It's the great food truck race. Yeah. You got to check it out. It's awesome. I, I'm addicted. I watch it. So you, you have the, I mean, I, you got to come to Manhattan because right now you are only in Denver, Philadelphia, and Phoenix, correct? That's correct. Yeah, we're trying to reach some density. Uh, New York has uh, stricter franchising laws, so we won't be there until after January 1st. Uh, but oh, Manhattan is... Yeah, no, it's not far. In Manhattan, we, we get so many prospects that are interested in growing there that uh, we almost can't keep up with them. But, yeah, so that's just, it's just a, a legal hurdle we have to jump through. Uh, but we are coming, and you will see us there. I understand what you're saying, though, because it's much like you go to your favorite hot dog stand, and you know the guy, and you know his dogs are not dirty, or maybe they're supposed to be. I don't know. I don't eat hot dogs either. <laughs> but so you, you pick a place, and you got your customers, and... It's fast and it keeps you moving. And, I, I, you know, the notion that you're outside is fabulous. But, again, though, ha now, on the flip side, how do you compete with the likes of Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and people that have their favorite coffee houses? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one customer at a time. You know, the barista relationship that you get at Starbucks, you know, I, I call a lot of the brick-and-mortar coffee chains assembly line coffee. You know, these are people that are, are hired. They're put on the line relatively quickly. They, 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 they really make your espresso drink by pushing a button. They don't touch a bean. They don't pack a bean. There's a whole art to making coffee. On our bikes, we have lever machines, which is the old way that, you know, the, the lever espresso machine was invented in, in 1940 in Italy. And, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an artisan way of making coffee. You can make stronger espresso, weaker espresso. When you go to Starbucks or you go to any of the chains, you're going to get the same type of coffee. You're going to get the same drink, but you really can't get much variation. When you get to know your barista on a bike cafe, 
you can get exactly what, you, what you're looking for. In fact, you can discover new drinks that their, that their equipment, quite frankly, just couldn't make. So what we're trying to do is create a one-on-one -on -one relationship that was really what coffee was meant to be. It was an art form, and it was, it was a slow-paced kind of experience that you went through. You didn't just rush into a store and rush out. And that's what people are starting to appreciate from the Bike Cafe. And those are the kind of owners that we're getting for the Bike Cafe. We're not looking for people who just you know, want to have a, a passive business. We're looking for passionate people. Um, you know, like you mentioned, we're both Italians. I use my hands a lot, too. <laughs> we're, looking, we're looking for people with just as much passion about coffee. And, um, and that's the standard that we're setting. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big coffee drinker. I love drinking coffee. Tell me, is it hard to ride the bike? It's got to be it's, heavy. Uh, it's, it's not hard if it's flat. If you, you know, in Denver and, and some cities, it, it's, it's a pretty good challenge on an incline. We're already working on a motorized version, so there's some power assist when you're on a hill. But believe it or not, if you're on a flat surface, it's like riding a tricycle when you were six years old. It's, it absolutely glides like butter. So um, for the person that wants to ride, they can. Uh, but uh, like I said, you know, th this is a, it's such a functional bike and it's such a beautiful piece of equipment. To really see it in a picture on a screen really doesn't do it justice. Um, it looks beautiful whether it's in a lobby or, you know, an airport or, you know, just riding down the street. So it's really very versatile in that way. Uh, you know what, Ralph, I got to tell you, I think it's a fabulous idea. And quickly, can you just tell us the green benefits? Because I know it's eco-friendly as well. Yeah, I mean, we do what we can. Uh, you know, we ask our, and it's the little things. We ask our customers to leave their wooden stirrers behind. You know, we ask our customers whether they really need a sleeve or not. Do they really need a top? Uh, we give them a discount if they bring a, any kind of um, a plastic drink, you know, reusable mug to the cart. Uh, we keep all our coffee grounds and we distribute them to organic farms or, some, or, or a composting facility that can use them. So while you have an operator that's riding around and using, you know, muscle energy and calories instead of fossil fuel to deliver his coffee, we also do what we can post-product to, to have that green impact uh, and, and obviously, as we, do, as we grow and more and more units are out there, that impact will grow with it. I think you're on to something, Ralph. Ralph Massetti, President oh, and CEO you. of Bike Cafe. He's also written a book on franchising, the art. Uh, wait, what's the book called? Help me. Oh, uh, is, is Your Business Right for Franchising? That, thank you very much. Because that's Thanks hot, a lot, that's hot as well, it. too. And, oh, sure, of course. But I think that's a really, that's a hot topic as well. Because a lot of people ask that. I have a thriving small business. Should I take it? Fran should I go franchise? Should I not? Should I keep it under the same roof? It's a great question. Check out the book, Ralph. Yeah, and, it, and, you and I'd know be what? happy that you. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go, no, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, come to New York. I'd love a cup of coffee. I'd, I'd be glad to meet you. Appreciate it. Ralph, thanks so much. Ralph Massetti thanks out so in much, Denver, Tracy. president and CEO of Bike Cafe. It's no wonder then that they're not in San Francisco yet. <laughs>